Hey, g'day, it's Prezzo here. Welcome back to the shop. Here's my problem. I've got a whole bunch of this R8 tooling and it fits on my beautiful Bridgeport mill, but at the moment I've got absolutely nowhere to put it. Now I have got one of these lovely rolling tool cabinets, but at the moment it's pretty well full. And as you can see, all the drawers are neatly arranged and very tidy and orderly. However, I decided that I want to be able to get at this uh, a tooling uh, easily without having to walk around at this tool cabinet and for that reason I decided to build myself a collet rack which can bolt the side of Bridgeport Mill. Now to make this work I cast a pair of these aluminium brackets and they have been machined uh, on this surface here to match this curvature of the Bridgeport column. I did that in my last video and you can go back and look at the casting process too if you wish. And the idea is that they will bolt down, then we're going to have a flat surface on top which will be drilled and slotted to take the accessories that I have. Now in the commercially available version of this rack, uh, the brackets actually fit in this way and they hung by a single screw on top and that puts the screw in tension when the weight pulls down on the bracket. Now I've deliberately reversed this so that my brackets will have the fixing screws underneath and the flat surface on top will pretty much hide these brackets. Now I just thought that was a neat look and I know that this is strong enough to take the weight <laughs> that I'm going to be dealing with. And the flat surface on top here is going to be made from carbon fibre. Now you're probably thinking, gee Mark, that's overdoing it a bit. <laughs> Why would you use carbon fibre? Well the simpler answer is that I have some, it was given to me, it's thick enough, strong enough and just the right size to make the shape that I want. And interestingly, uh, back in 2009, I was very fortunate. I got a tour of the Red Bull F1 factory in Milton Keynes in England. And a couple of days later, we got to tour the McLaren factory in Woking. Now, we got to see not only just F1 cars just lying around. I think the, the Red Bull factory actually had one on the wall and they had one on the ceiling in the reception area. But we also got to see a lot of the aero parts, so the wings and strakes and all that sort of thing. And uh, these young kids that I had over there were around about 14, 15, 16 years of age. And they would stroke these carbon fibre parts and run their hands over them. And you could almost hear them thinking, ooh, carbon fibre. And it's a bit like the way I would treat chrome on the old custom cars and hot rods. So there you go, uh, carbon fibre is the new chrome. This is a sample piece of that carbon fibre I'll be using to make the flat part of the collet rack. I use this piece to drill through a 25mm hole with a hole saw and that is the correct size for the collets and I just wanted to be sure I could get through that with a hole saw and it drills fine, it makes a funny smell but that's okay. And this stuff is around about 8mm thick and uh, it's incredibly strong and it's oil resistant, it's absolutely perfect for this um, application. Now this is the actual piece that I'll be using to make collet rack and I made a paper template here just to be sure it was all going to fit and uh, I drew this paper template out on Corel Draw and it's based on the original design that I saw and there's enough space in here for all of the collets that I've got plus there's some room in the centre for some bigger parts like the face mills and the boring head and so on. These slots I believe are for things like uh, spanners and chuck keys and so on. Now a word or two about this uh, piece of carbon fibre here. Now this was uh, part of a surgical operating table. I kid you not. <laughs> it was uh, the complete operating table was given to me by um, a person I met on YouTube. And he told me I could uh, extract any parts that I want from this assembly and use them however I wanted. And this thing was a, a, an amazing piece of engineering. It was full of electric motors and hydraulic pumps and electrical switch gear. And these surfaces here were the, the areas where the patient would lie during the surgery. Now they use carbon fibre because it's strong but also it can be cleaned and uh, sanitised. But also it's transparent to x-rays so they could put x-ray plates underneath here. They could operate a, on a patient and do the x-rays while they're doing the operation. Now this has been painted uh, but I can sand that paint off and expose the epoxy underneath and so we can see the carbon fibre weave. And these screws, uh, I'm going to use these to hold this piece of carbon fibre down to my brackets. So I've got a, an 8mm thread in my bracket. These screws are stainless steel, beautifully made. And they originally went through the carbon fibre. I'm 
to hold everything together. So I might as well reuse those. Now I'm going to um, get rid of these right angle edges here, I'm going to grind those off. We'll get a flat piece of stock and then we can go ahead and mark this out. Now it turns out you can cut carbon fibre with an ordinary metal cut off disc. Um, does the job really well. So I'm just going to slice off these flanges and the holes and get this down to a flat manageable piece. Uh, it gets a bit burny, but it uh, gets through there okay. It sort of throws out little uh, bits of compacted uh, resin, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's a reasonably clean cut. Just to make this a bit easier to manage, I've cut that down into a smaller piece, which is just slightly bigger than the pattern we're going to cut on here. And this will allow this to fit inside the machine we're going to use to do the next step. Fine, I wore a mask. I know that's a bit hard to see but there's all my geometry marked out on that piece of carbon fibre now and it has the hole centres for all of the holes I need to bore through there with a hole saw and the outline is geometrically correct so I can go ahead and get that cut out now. putting a little bit of that orange crayon in the engraved lines there so I can see that more easily when I do the cutting out. There's not a lot of contrast there. As it comes out of the laser, this will make it more visible. Switched over to a wood cutting blade there to see if it would cut a bit quicker and it did to start with but the edge has gone off that really quickly. I'll have to go back to the metal cutting blade. You would have seen me doing a series of relief cuts into that curve so that when you start removing the waste, the blade's less likely to get trapped. Uh, you won't find yourself working into a corner and having to, to back the blade out. The waste will drop out in small pieces. So you end up with these little bits dropping away and you can back out very easily and attack it from the other end. Just tried a couple of different types of lubricant to see if it would make a difference. So I tried a like a dry silicon lube and also like a paraffin wax. Um, and they actually both seem to make it worse. And what's happening here is that the um, the 
the teeth or the gullets on the teeth are just filling up with waste and they can't eject those out of the top of the cup and it just sort of rubs around in there and starts to um, build up a lot of heat but I managed to get through on both sides just cutting from both sides toward the center the hardest part of course is getting that little plug out of there and this is by no means a new hole saw either if I wasn't so stingy I would have gone for a new one this will get it done though The, um, the really interesting thing about having that laser scored line there is that when you start grinding back to that line you see a little uh, like a remnant of the epoxy on the surface there start to splinter up and it breaks away and at the point where it breaks away you're right on the edge. With these holes here I'll get a Dremel with a drum sander and go around the inside of those get a length cleaned up and we'll do a bit of just uh, some fine sanding on the edge and then we'll put a a chamfer or a chamfer depending on where you live yeah oh man the debates that's caused That's really clean on the inside there now. I'm going to look after these other edges. Stuff actually sands really, really well. Uh, a lot of what you're seeing there on that edge there is actually paint, but that edge is coming up super smooth. But so far, that's looking really nice. Just off camera, I went and cut three of these slots. Um, there's a fourth one, which I'm not touching just yet. I'm not sure what it's meant to be for. I can custom fit it later if I need it. And I'm just filing these edges. Uh, it files very much like metal. That cleans up quite nicely down to the line. Well, I think I know why they painted this. Uh, on this side here, there's a slight flaw, and it looks like two pieces of the pre-preg carbon fiber have been butted together in the mold, and they didn't quite fit neatly, and it's left uh, like a joint line. You can see that the weave's not continuous along that line there. But this is the underside, so I'm not too bothered. Uh, on this side here, this is gonna be the top, and uh, now that we've taken the paint off that, it actually feels like there's not a lot of uh, epoxy in that surface there. I think I've actually exposed the carbon fiber. But I have a plan. What I'm going to try to do is to powder coat this with a with a clear powder coat. Now the carbon fiber will take the temperature, what 200 degrees C, and it's conductive, so that should be fine. And I'll do a scrap piece first and make sure it works. If I if that doesn't work, uh, I'll try just putting a uh, like a clear single pack acrylic lacquer on this, which is fairly tough and fairly wear resistant. But before we do that, I'm going to get these brackets uh, screwed in place with one screw and then we can offer it up to the machine and see how it all fits and if, if it's all good we'll drill through the other holes. Okay. 
I just took this over to the machine and actually tried it in place and I adjusted these clamps until it was sitting as accurately as I could get it. But I'll get one hole drilled uh, for each bracket and then we'll try it again. These have to be an eight millimeter clearance hole. I'm drilling six and a half at the moment. So I don't want to damage the thread in the bracket itself. All right, we'll get these opened out to eight. Ah, didn't chip, that's good. Actually, I think I'm gonna go eight and a half, just to give me some adjustment. Okay, be that way, see if I care. I just went and drill that on the drill press, <laughs> which is the right way to do it. This is the thing, you guys, you know, I gotta drag this camera all around the workshop every time I switch operations. And man, it gets a bit loathsome sometimes. It certainly slows down your production. So there's one of the screws in. I like these stainless steel screws because uh, they spread the load. Uh, you don't get a point contact uh, on the surface of the carbon fiber there, and they won't corrode. They look sexy. What's not to like? I've got these screws a little bit loose and if I push everything in there now it all sort of just um, moves and pivots into shape and if I lock those screws down now that will give me the best chance of getting a, an accurate fit. Yeah, is that going to work? Do you hope so. Alrighty, uh, this has been a constantly changing plan here. Uh, what I've done with this tape here is it's given me an offset from the edge of the machine section of the column. And I've measured from the zero point, uh, the zero mark here on the chamfer, 90 millimeters either side of center. And that gives me a point to aim for when I hold this in place and drill through the quarter inch holes in the bracket into the column. Now, what I've decided to do is only to fit the screws on the right hand bracket, this one here, and we'll get all that locked in place and then I think the other bracket's going to need some adjustment. It's, uh, there's a, a lot of flare on this section of the column here and it's kicking the bracket out at the bottom. So I may have to grind a bit off here and just sort of work on it to get it a slightly closer fit. And I can still use the epoxy there if I need to to get that to conform a bit better. Man, how thick is that? Have to be in at least, what's that, half an inch? Oh, that'll be five eighths, three quarters. Oof. Leave it there. Just drill that out, number seven. I uh, had to shorten these screws a bit. I didn't really drill all the way through with this hole here. I don't know how thick the casting is in that point. And look at this, scratching the paint, man. Anyway, let's get this one screw in. Okay, what I can do now is spot through this other hole, get that threaded, get a screw in there, and then we can work on this other side and try and improve the fit there. But so far, that's looking good. I've got both screws on this right hand bracket now and I'm going to start working on this one on the left here. Now there's a gap at the top at the moment around about three or four millimeters wide. And if I start grinding off some of the material on the bottom of the uh, left hand bracket, I can maybe close this gap up. I'd really like to get that closer and I'd rather do it without having to bog up the back of this with epoxy. So I'm going to take this one off and we'll start grinding away material and just keep offering it up until we can close that gap.
Just got to have the angle grinder ground a bit out of the bottom of the bracket there, trying to maintain that same radius on that face there. And that, that's actually quite good. <laughs> that's surprising. I think it needs a bit more. Uh, I'm going to go backwards and forwards and we'll get this uh, a bit closer. But that gap at the top there now is probably only about two millimetres. So I'll get a bit more out of there. Well, there's the second grind. Gee, that's pretty good, you know. I can sort of see just down inside here, there's uh, still a corner touching. I reckon if we uh, get two more screws in there and bolt that up tight, that's gonna, that's gonna fit. Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. I'll just start one more grind on that. And when I push that in and simulate tightening up that screw or these screws, that closes up really well. And probably can't see it, but down inside there, it's a pretty close match as well. So that's the bracket on the left. There's the one on the right. It fits really nicely. So there you go, no epoxy required. Happy days. Off camera I did some modifications to this carbon fibre plate in preparation for fixing it. And you'll recall I said I had some other accessories that needed to fit on that. And rather than just drill random holes and hope for the best, I measured all of those parts. So they are the, the big face mill, the ER40 collar chuck, drill chuck, the slitting saw arbor and the boring head. And then with those correct diameters in Corel Draw, I could move those things around until they fitted neatly without interfering with anything else. And then I fixed the centers. I've gone ahead and drilled those holes. I drilled the second set of fixing holes for the brackets. Now, I've given this a good sand on both sides. I've uh, deburred everything. I went up to 120 grit uh, paper and it's feeling beautiful, looks lovely but it's very porous. Now I just poured water on this to see what would happen and it just sucked straight into the top layer of this epoxy so oil will do the same thing. So it needs to be sealed. I don't know why it didn't have the, the thick layer of epoxy like the other parts that I got. But just as an experiment I put this part in the oven with a clear powder coat on it and although it's shiny and smooth and water repellent it just cosmetically looks awful. So I don't know what happened, it seems to have sucked something out of the epoxy or out of the carbon and it's discoloured that quite badly, so yeah, that's not going to work. But this one, now this is just a clear epoxy resin, one of those two-part resins you buy uh, for you know, furniture and so on. And I just poured this on, I just smeared it out with a stick and uh, it's dried really glossy, super hard. And I think if I put this on with a roller, it's going to look fantastic. So that's what we're going to do. So that's the next step. And this whole thing can go together. I think I'm ready to put the resin on this. So I'm going to have to do the bottom side first and let that cure and then turn it over to the, the top side. Really would like to do it in one go, but I'm worried about drips and runs. This is a two part clear gloss epoxy. I've used this before on uh, a number of projects and it's got about a 24 hour cure time before you can really work on it. So I'm going to have to leave this overnight. In order to get the resin right inside these bores, I've decanted some of the epoxy into a separate container because I'm using one of these little cotton tips and it's picking up a lot of carbon from the interior of that part. I should have wiped this more carefully. The trouble with this carbon fibre is it sort of gets everywhere. <laughs> and all I'm doing here is just sort of running that around the inside of the bore. We'll get all these coated first and then we'll do the big flat surface on top. So you can see that wet with resin on the inside there. Just been around, coated all those hard to reach areas with a cotton tip and I think I'm going to use one of these cheap $2 rollers just to put the resin on this side. Uh, I can chuck that away and I've got a new one for the other side. Alright, I've never done this before. <laughs> Always throw myself in the deep end. I think half the resin is just going to get used soaking up in the, the roller.
So one good thing is I can do these edges again when I do the other side, just so I get a, a good soaking of resin into those edges because what I don't want to happen is to have this absorb a lot of oil and grease. So I want to sort of have good coverage on those edges. Well, it's certainly got a good cover on there, but it's not as glossy as I would like. I'm just going to run a gas flame over this, and that helps to pop any of those little bubbles that are in the surface. See if we can smooth that out a bit. That's better. Uh, let's just hope this all flattens out as it cures. Alrighty, uh, it's the next day and just for full disclosure that first coat that I did on the other side of this was a bit of a disaster really. Um, I found out the hard way that these cheap rollers are cheap for a reason. Uh, I didn't bother to prep it in any way, I just took it out and used it and it had like a million bits of uh, fluff <laughs> on it which got uh, deposited in the epoxy. So when I had a look at it this morning it was just awful. So. I sanded that off and I've screwed this to a handle so I can sort of get it both sides. Uh, the other thing I'm finding is that the, uh, the resin's got a, like a million bubbles in it when you're done. And if you put it on thick enough, the bubbles can be popped, but then you run the risk of uh, getting runs and big mess on the edges and inside the holes. So I'm having to be a little bit uh, sparing with the, the resin. But it's all a big experiment. So we're just going to see how we go here. If it's a big disaster, I'll sand it all off and we'll do something different. But I think it's worth a try. All right, this, this time I've got no bits in the roller. What I did was uh, I washed it in hot water with some detergent. Then I uh, spun it dry with some compressed air. Then I vacuumed it. <laughs> And then I let it dry thoroughly and then I vacuumed it again and I seem to have got rid of all little bits I hope. Okay I've got good thick coating on both sides now. I've gone over that with the torch. It's all looking nice and glossy. I guess the important thing to do now is just walk away and leave it, Mark. Don't mess with it. <laughs> well, here we are next day. I did loosen these screws before the epoxy fully gelled so that they wouldn't bond to the underlying carbon fibre. So they're coming out fairly easily. And what you see in there is just the remains of some masking tape I used to put under the screw head so they wouldn't bond completely. That's really nice and hard now. It's a little bit rough on the back side, but I'm not going to see that. The top's looking great. Okay, let's get this on. Brackets have been powder coated, so have the heads of the screws. And the only bad thing about this whole thing is that uh, during the process of fitting these brackets, uh, I managed to scratch all the paint up. Ah, oh, what can you do? You can't skin a cat without breaking eggs, I suppose. So I'm just going to leave everything a bit loose until I get all the screws in, and then we'll snug everything down. Well, that's all attached now, so I'm just going to snug all these screws down. Well, there you go. I reckon that's strong enough.
Well, there you go. Beautiful space agey carbon fiber collet rack. Almost certainly a one of a kind. And yes, I don't have a full complement of collets just yet. I've got uh, one more in the machines tool to go in here. And I'll get some imperial ones as well for the common sizes. But for now, I think this is going to be a useful addition to the Bridgeport. And I suppose what I can do now is just step back and watch all this lovely metal go rusty. <laughs> Which is almost certainly going to happen in my workshop anyway. Okay, now in the next video I'm going to be doing some metal casting. So join me for that. That's going to be fun. And uh, it's Prezzo signing out for now. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you soon.